exciting uh, calculus class. Sorry, I was uh, in the Discord chat uh, giving uh, Reese a hard time for his horrendous handwriting, and uh, um, yeah, kind of lost track of lost track of time. So, yeah, exactly, Arlen. Uh, that's totally a Picard face palm kind of moment. So, anyway, uh, let's get to it. So, um, last time we were oh. They've uh, they've made an update to Scratch. Now the uh, they've got these little. Oh, I bet you it's an April first thing. Oh, okay. So yeah, they got these cute little cat hat things on the 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 whatever the events. So um, yeah, I bet you that's something for April first or whatever. But anyway, all right. So let's uh, just recap what we had so far. We had our our sort of deliberately stupid intro. Uh, then we had a main menu, and then we started the game. And so let's uh, go through that. There was our our silly intro. And if I hit space, it would skip it. Or if not, it would just here. And then we can uh, shoot our rocket ship. And uh, we made it so that there would be 10 rocket ships uh, would launch. And then um, uh, that would be sort of it. Um, okay, so what I thought we could do today would be to add, um, basically sort of add a second level or a boss or something like that. So, um, let's see what sprites we have to work with, um, here. We already had the, uh, the rocket ship. Let's see if there's any other kind of, uh, spaceship looking things that might be, uh, kind of useful. Um, we got planets. Um, we've got the squirrel, um, yeah, any suggestions on what we use for our boss? Oh, the stream just failed, uh, okay. Um, so, let's see, let me check the stream. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, Arlen. I'm not sure what that was all about. Um, okay. So um, let's uh, let's pick a sprite to basically be our our boss. We've already used the the rocket ship. So why don't we use this robot here? Um, as kind of our our boss, um, and I'll um, let's see a couple things we need to do. First off, when the game starts, we need to hide it, and let's make sure that it's uh, uh, in the correct spot. So let's say uh, set uh, X and Y to where it is on the screen currently, uh, and then. Uh, we need to set up basically how to um, how to launch um, or how to uh, tell the game that we're ready for the boss to appear. So uh, the rocket ship, um, we have game start. It repeats ten times and uh, produces ten um, uh, the ten different rockets. So the only time that this loop is going to complete is if um, we um, uh, all the rockets are destroyed and the player hasn't lost the game yet. So what we can do is we can add an event and broadcast. Let's make a new message called boss level, and then. Um, um, we, uh, we can use the boss level, uh, message to activate our boss. So when I receive boss level, we should show, okay, and, um, 
then let's set the uh, let's make a variable for the boss health. Okay, and let's move that over here, and then we can set the boss health to initially be, uh, let's say, 10, and uh, then I'm also going to hide the variable when the game starts and show it when we get to the boss level. Um, and then uh, we need to add code for basically what to do when the... Uh, the boss gets shot by the um, uh, by the lightning bolt. So for that, we can go over to the um, um, to our rocket ship, and we can just basically copy um, most of that code, right? So if it's touching the lightning, then deduct one from the uh, the uh, the health. So we'll have basically a, a loop and inside that loop we need to say is it touching the uh, lightning and if so um, we need to uh, deduct one from the boss health and um, Let's um, let's actually make it um, so that he'll sort of spin around when he gets hit. So under events, or sorry, not events. I'll do looks. We'll do um, we'll do sort of a sequence of of backdrop. I mean, uh, costume switches. And so we could say B C D A. And this is just basically to make it look cool. Um, and uh, then I probably should put a weight in there of some small number. Um, to um, make it so that the uh, the animation looks reasonable. And we can, we can of course, play with the... Uh, play with those numbers and say, oops, uh, point 0.1, um, to, to make it look decent. Um, okay, so um, now let me, um, let me go back into our rocket ship code, and I initially had 10 rocket ships. For the sake of testing, I'm going to change that to just one so that we get to the boss super quickly. Um, and that way we can test it. So let's see what we've got so far. Okay, so what happened there was it uh, looked like it worked pretty well except that the lightning bolt kept triggering the boss health. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to, on the lightning bolt, uh, basically add, uh, duplicate this little piece of code, but change it so that if it's touching the robot, uh, it also deletes itself. And so that would be there. Okay, so now let's try it again. <laughs> Okay, so that looks pretty pretty reasonable, um, and um, so uh, let's see what else could we do to sort of spice this up. Well, let's make it so that the robot actually starts shooting back at um, back at the player, and because uh, that would be certainly cool. Um, so um, let's. Um, uh, Let's make another sprite to be the uh, 
the attack from the the uh, robot and I've got a uh, sort of sprite that I've made before um, let's use um, let's see we've already used the lightning bolt uh, we could use the star that would work um, or um, let's see just kind of looking through what looks good actually I think the star probably looks fine uh, so let's let's just use that um, and so we'll make it so that the robot fires stars at um, at uh, the player periodically and then the player would have to kind of dodge them um, so um, so what we need to do is basically make the um, the uh, robot spawn clones of the star and so what we need to do is we need to make a new message um, and we'll call this um, boss fire rather than fire and so this will trigger uh, one of the stars to fire at the player okay so um, we could do um, for example let's say um, let's put in a repeat loop and let me just say five uh, times and we'll repeat boss fire and say we'll wait a second between each repetition okay and I'll put that into the uh, the forever loop code here in just a moment <clears throat> um, but then the star code what we need to do is um, let's have it um, um, uh, let's see what variables do we have um, so kind of like the uh, we had a variable for the cat's Y position and uh, we had to update that where what I'm going to do is I'm also going to add the similar thing for the robots Y position uh, the idea being <clears throat> that I want to um, uh, I want to be able to have the robot move later uh, so let's say robot Y position and we'll hide that but then we'll set the robot's Y position to negative four. Um, okay, so the uh, um, right, and then uh, let's set the so the star. What we'll do is uh, let's see when I when green flag is clicked. Uh, hide okay and then control when I start as a clone then I need to show I also need to put myself in the correct position so go to um, the robot is at uh, well let's say X is um, here so 103 and the Y position will make the robots Y position and then we'll show okay so that will make the um, the star appear basically vertically on the screen where the robot is and at the moment I'm not making the um, um, uh, I'm not making the um, the robot move but I'll add that in later okay so that just makes the star appear but then we need to also make it uh, uh, go at the um, at the player and there's a couple ways that we could do that so under motion uh, what we can do is we can have it point towards the player okay um, and then move a certain number of steps Okay, so I'll have it point towards the cat, and then I'm going to put in a loop, which will be a forever loop, and uh, I'll have it move, say, 
five steps. So if I run this, it'll do that. All right, maybe five was too small, so let's let's make it ten. Oops. Um, so, okay, I need to unhide the star. Um, there we go. All right, so if I run that little piece of code, then the star will fly at the, uh, the cat, and then we need to check two things. First is, uh, have I touched the cat? And if so, I need to um, deduct one from the health. The other thing I need to do is if the x coordinate ever gets too small, then we should just delete it. Okay, so uh, under sensing, let's see, if we are touching the cat, then we need to deduct the cat's health by one. And then uh, let's delete that clone. Okay, and then the other thing we could do is if it is, um, if the x coordinate of it, which is x position here, if the x coordinate is less than, uh, let's say, 245, negative 245, then uh, that means that it's about to go off the screen, and so we'll just delete that clone like so. Okay. So now if I run this, let me move this dude back. Um, so it, uh, it would delete, it didn't delete the clone here, but it would uh, if this were really a clone. So the reason that that didn't happen is that this, um, this dude here is not actually a clone it's the original. Um, we have to spawn clones uh, in the game. Uh, okay, while we're at it, let's make it look cool, and let's um, let's do the thing where we uh, set the color effect and then change it uh, as we move, right? So that we get kind of the that business going on. Um, okay, so now to make the uh, the clones actually appear, what we need to do is put the boss fire uh, routine into uh, our our sort of stack, okay. And so what what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make um, a different thing here, and I'm going to um, add in some weights, okay. And I'm going to duplicate this. Um, I'm going to add in a weight, but then I'm going to add in another pattern. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my cat's health, which, where did I say that? I set that here. I'm going to make that a 1,000 just so that we'll never die. Uh, for testing purposes, and so let's run this and see what we've got, and I'll go back to the robot code while we run this. Alright, so... Okay, where are our... Where are our boss fire? Oh, I know why. Uh, forgot one thing, which is when I receive boss fire, uh, we need to create a clone. So that's what I forgot. Okay, so let's, there we go. And now the clones actually will, uh, will work. Okay, so let's try that again. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. Uh, so my, my thought here with the, um, let me go back to the robot, with this sort of thing is to have basically a firing pattern. So if you, um, if you think of some games like 
uh, you know, these sorts of uh, flying, shooting kind of games, uh, then the um, the the boss sort of fires in several patterns, and uh, so I've got sort of a sequence here uh, of of patterning. Um, and then uh, let's say that um, uh, we could actually put this inside our forever loop, but I don't want to do that. Um, so um, what one thing we could do is we could make this procedure of the boss fire a little bit, we could compactify this. And this brings us to something we haven't talked about before, which is called make a block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run um, here. I'm going to make a block, and I'll call this um, boss shoot pattern. And then I'm going to, um, oops, I don't want label text. Um, I'm going to add an input, OK? And I'm going to add two different inputs. And so this first one would be number of shots. And the second one would be the delay between shots. OK, so if I create that, then I get this little thing here. Define boss shoot pattern, number of shots, and delay. And then what I can do is I can say, OK, I'll define a repeat where it repeats the number of shots, it broadcasts boss fire, and then it waits the delay. OK? And then what I can do is this loop here and this loop there, I can get rid of, and I can replace those with boss shoot pattern and boss shoot pattern. So the first one, I had five shots with a delay of one second. And the second one, I had 10 shots with a delay of half a second. And now, this will do exactly what we did a minute ago, but I've been able to condense a lot of code into um, this sort of pinkish um, subroutine. Uh, and then I have a defined thing here that defines what that subroutine does. Okay. So, all right, so same thing as before. Um, it's going to shoot stars, but then, right, and then uh, in this case, I haven't defined any further patterns. So, uh, what we could do is we could actually, under control, we could put this whole thing in its own loop and just say, repeat this, wait a second, and then do the boss shooting pattern. Um, OK, so, so that gets us uh, how to define uh, subroutines. Um, and hopefully that makes sense. Let's also make sure that the boss moves up and down a little bit, because that would be kind of cool. So under motion, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to, um, let's see, we'll do if, um, I'll put an if loop in here, right there. So if the y position is, uh, let's say, uh, greater than um, 
um, then I need to turn the thing around and have it go down. So what I could do is I could say, um, uh, let's see, so events, if the boss, um, uh, sorry, if the boss's y coordinate is greater than 100 or 170, then set the boss direction to, I'll actually make it negative one for down uh, for a reasons that'll become clear in a moment. Get rid of that, put this here. And then similarly, I'm gonna duplicate that because if the Y position is less than negative 170, that means I'm at the bottom of the screen and I should turn around and come back up. Okay, and so then I'll set the direction to one and then I want to under motion I'm going to change y by some number every time the loop runs. And let me make that, um, let's make it three, t well, okay, let's make a new variable here. Let's make a variable called boss speed. And let's uh, start boss speed um, as, let me just try three and then I'm going to change the Y coordinate by the product of boss speed and boss direction. So um, the um, boss direction I made either one or minus one and boss speed is three so then what I'll be doing is changing the the boss's position height position by either three or negative three and um, okay why is it not uh, running oh um, Okay, because I need uh, greater than or equal to's here. Um, well, no, that should be okay. Um, okay, there we go. So now our uh, boss is going to kind of move up and down and shoot at us as we go. And, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then the idea would be that I would do something special when the boss health uh, hits zero, okay? So uh, let's program that in to have the boss health be zero. Let's also make it that uh, we get some sound effects when the stars uh, fire. So let's put in, um, what's this? Yeah, that's cheesy. Uh, let's put in a sound. Um, so let's go to choose a sound and hang on one second. Puppy wants attention. All right, now you have to come outside. I'm putting up a, a gate in front of my hall or my office door so she can't come in and bug me. She's very much not happy with this whole me not paying attention to her while I'm teaching. Um, okay, so um, we already had the, um, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, we already had this sort of laser effect, so let's see if there's, let's use this one, this sort of zoop. Uh, okay, so we'll make it so that when the, um, um, when the, the thing fires, we get the zoop sound, okay, and, um, that sounds kind of cool, uh, and then on the robot, we basically need to check, um, is it the case that the robot's health is zero, all right, so for that, uh, let's make a, another thing here. And let's say if the variable 
boss health is equal to zero, then that means that we've won. And so let's uh, let's broadcast the event um, win. Okay. Now what should happen when uh, we receive the event win? Well, then we should um, we should hide the robot because it just we just destroyed it, and we should also stop all the scripts in this sprite. So basically make the shooting and the movement and stuff stop, okay? And then under, um, uh, so that will make everything turn off. So let me say, change the boss health to one, so I just have to one-shot it for testing. And then what should happen is he should disappear. Yep, he disappears. Okay, so that's it. Uh, so what we would want to do here is basically have like a you won kind of uh, thing appear on the screen. And for that, we can do kind of similarly to what we did with the game over uh, stuff. So let's just make a new sprite here. Oops, uh, I want to paint one. Uh, so let's paint a new sprite and let's make it... Um, Congrats, you win. Okay, whatever. And uh, I'm going to change the font on this to be the uh, the pixel font. Um, and um, then we need to center this there. Um, okay, so then under... Um, the uh, let's this uh, object when we start the game should be hidden and it should only appear when I receive win and then we'll show. Okay, now we also have the sprite um, press plus press space to retry. So we could actually use um, use this here, which is also to say when I receive um, when I receive win, do all of this stuff. Okay. And then the only other thing we need to do here is we need to make sure that it uh, is centered at the origin, um, like there. Okay. Um, and then let's also make the cat uh, when I receive um, when I receive uh, win. Uh, let's make the cat disappear. Uh, all right, so let's test this out. Oh, well, that was that was quick. Um, so actually, I think that that reveals one bug that we have under the rocket ships here, the broadcast boss level. We should probably put a delay in there, um, like this, so that we have. Okay, now the other thing we need is under congrats you win, we need to say when I receive, um, when I receive game over, sorry, uh, game start, um, it needs to hide. So there we go. 
Um, okay, so let's see. The game audio is much louder than you, so it's a bit deafening. Um, and he's gone. Okay, so let me see if I can fix that, uh, the game audio uh, here in. Um, all right, let's try this. Is that better? Or is it still too loud? Okay, I just had to adjust the audio level uh, in OBS so that my um, my voice is, uh, yeah. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, so, yeah, just to recap there. And then the boss will appear. Oops. Oh. So I hit space uh, right when we finished, so yeah. Yeah, okay, so there we go. We got a pretty pretty cool looking game. Um, how do we get the stars to go with the robot? They seem to be firing from the middle. Okay, so let me replay that and see what you're saying. Oh, okay. So, uh, there, we just need to go to the stars, and the X coordinate I have, uh, is just, I just need to adjust this. So, let's make that, like, 125, say. Well, the robot's X coordinate is 166. So, if I make this 166, it'll actually appear to be firing from dead middle on the robot. So, let's try that. Um, oh, I see. Uh, I forgot one thing. Uh, so on the robot, we never updated the value of the uh, Y position. Uh, so under variables, we need to, um, uh, on the movement here, um, where we change Y by whatever, we need to also change, or actually not change, um, Uh, we'll set the boss's uh, Y position to its Y position. So this I forgot, and so what that meant is that the uh, stars were always firing from the exact same Y coordinate, and so now it should move with the robot. So let's try that. Yeah, there we go. That's much better. Yeah, there we go. That looks pretty good. Okay, so, um, so, looks like we got a pretty, pretty fully functional game here, so, um, it, um, uh, so good question, Reese, on the, the stars, I'd forgotten about that. Um, okay, so just kind of to recap the stuff we did, uh, compared to what we had on, um, uh, Monday, we basically added a second level, or in this case, the boss. Now, if I wanted to make this game a lot more extended, I could have it so that I have multiple levels, and then you get the boss. Um, we could also add a lot of cool things, like uh, a lot of these games have power-ups that occasionally uh, you can pick up that allow you to fire faster, or maybe uh, let you get some health back, or something along those lines. Um, so there's a lot of cool things you can do. Um, and, um, so this hopefully gives you an idea of kind of the process of the development of a game, um, and this including, um, 
you know, sort of the process for when we started on this, I think, what was it, last week, and then we kept adding things and adding things, and uh, the key, um, maybe to, to say this, is that, um, in a sense, game development or any kind of development along these lines uh, is a lot like writing. So when you guys write essays for your classes, you start and you write something, and then you add things, and as you add things, you have to continually revise what you're doing, and that's kind of what we did here. I added something, and then I realized, oh, well, that means I need to go back and change this other thing to have that, blah, blah, blah. And uh, uh, so it was sort of an iterative process. You don't go into a game design situation like this thinking, I'm going to make the entire thing all in one sitting. You want to get something working, and then add something, and then add something. But then also, um, you guys hopefully noticed that there were a few times when we were doing this where I sort of paused and I said, oh, I'm going to need a variable for this because of something that I think is going to come later uh, down the line. Um, and so kind of think about this. Um, um, think about that as you, as you go. Um, so, um, okay, so one question. Um, we just had uh, was, um, oops, uh, when is this going to be up on YouTube? So, uh, Jimmy, there's two answers to that. One is you can immediately watch the, the replay on Twitch, uh, basically as soon as I finish the stream. Uh, the YouTube stuff, I have to basically export it from Twitch and then upload it to YouTube, and that takes maybe about an hour. Um, so um, so they'll go up on YouTube basically as fast as I can download and upload them. And uh, so it should be up basically, you know, not too long after class. Uh, all of the previous ones are up on YouTube. Uh, now, the reason I'm putting everything up on YouTube is, uh, and that's that would be where I would suggest that you guys watch replays rather than on Twitch, is because Twitch will delete uh, the video after a certain period of time. It's like 14 days or whatever. Um, and so it's, uh, uh, that's why I'm moving them to YouTube because YouTube's not going to delete them after any period of time. So uh, just get in the habit of watching the replays on YouTube, plus that way I get the play counts, which means I get all the ad money. Well, not really. Um, I get all the play counts and then uh, uh, just use Twitch for when I'm live. Um, okay, the other thing that I wanted to kind of mention again here for recap purposes is the fact that I was able to define a function and uh, then condense a chunk of code into a single block like there. Uh, now, the one downside to the way that functions work here in um, uh, Scratch is there's no way for a function to output a value. It can have input values but it can't output a value. So if you want a function to output something, you basically have to use a variable for its output value. It won't just define something. So you can't, for example, use a pink thing here uh, as the input for uh, something. Um, that's kind of unfortunate that, that it has that limitation, but again, you can always use a variable to get around that, and that's not the end of the world. Uh, okay, so with the last few minutes, um, I wanted to pop back over to Canvas and um, point out the next assignment that you guys have, which is the video game project. So let me just open up that, and I'll actually full screen it once it loads so that we can all see nice and clear. Okay, so um, we've talked about the de uh, some of this before, but basically you're going to make a video game. And the first step of this is to make a, or write what's called a design document. Um, you can think about a design document kind of like when you're writing an essay and you have to first think about what your essay topic is going to be and maybe uh, your annotated bibliography, you know, just sort of what are you going to be working with. Um, that's sort of where you start with something. Similar here, basically I want you to write me a roughly one-page document, so it doesn't have to be long, um, 
that sort of talks briefly about what kind of game you want to make, what its mechanics are going to be, what the objective of the game is. So, for example, in our, our um, game um, uh, that we just programmed, it was, uh, you know, the, there's going to be spaceships and you're gonna, they're going to be shooting at you and you want to shoot them and then there'll be a boss and whatever, right? Um, and then a brief description of what you considered the minimum vial, viable feature set. So what I might have said had I done this for our game is that, say, I want to have a level where there are enemies that are flying at you and you have to shoot them. And then I also want to have a boss. Okay, great. So the minimum viable feature set is basically a finished game that uh, has stuff in it, but not necessarily lots of extras. Okay, so what I mean by this is with our game, let me say that our minimum viable feature set would, would be making it so that we had one level worth of enemies and, the, uh, and one boss. Okay, but clearly I could have added a lot more to that. But those things I'm going to think of uh, extended or extra features. So extra levels, power-ups, other creative additions uh, that go, by, go beyond the minimum viable product. So I want to be clear on this. The minimum viable product is a fully functional game, right? It doesn't mean a half-working game. Um, in our case, what we've developed so far, I would consider for this the minimum viable product. And if I wanted to go beyond that, I would add other features like power-ups or more levels or more bosses or uh, something like that. Okay, I'd, I'd continually add things to it. Um, so uh, the other thing is that um, you may sort of realize that you're going to have some challenges that you need to deal with. So for example, um, uh, and this discussion has come up before, how would you define gravity? How would you make gravity work? Um, and so if you were trying, if you're, the game you want to make is sort of a Mario style uh, platform game, then you're going to have to come up with a way to, to deal with gravity. And uh, going into that, you may realize that's going to be the, one of the hard parts of programming, and that obviously should be where your initial efforts are. Um, but basically, I want to know what um, what stuff do you think is going to be the hard part for you in terms of programming? Uh, okay, and I want this Friday night so that I can read these over quickly this weekend and uh, give you guys some comments. Uh, then next week on Thursday, uh, you're going to turn in a, basically an update to the design document. Uh, so like a paper, as you're designing and working, you're going to have to make some tweaks, um, and um, you may have maybe, for example, have uncovered you've solved one challenging problem, but now you've found another one, so you'd want to add that um, as you go. And then inside that design document, you'll also include a link to your Scratch project. So this way, you only have to turn in one thing to Canvas, which is the Word or PDF file, but it has a link inside of it, so that all I have to do is click the link to get to... Um, your uh, thing. Okay, so what's going to happen Thursday night is after you guys turn this in, uh, basically first thing Friday morning, I'm going to randomly assign you guys to do peer review of each other's projects. So each of you will get, uh, will review two other people's work, uh, and then hence your project will get reviewed by two other people. And I'm just going to randomize that. Canvas uh, uh, has a pretty nice way for me to do that. And so it will show you what you will get is you will get the development checkpoint from your assigned people. Uh, and so you will see their design document and the link to their game. And so what I want you guys to do is basically... Um, give each person a review and assess uh, constructive comments that you have on the design document of the game. Uh, if you notice any bugs or errors uh, or things that you think might be bugs or errors, point them out. And if, if you think that you see a way to, to uh, fix it, uh, then maybe give a possible for, for suggestion for how to fix it. And then also suggestions for how to improve the game, either in terms of visual quality, 
uh, the fun of it? Um, are there things that are missing that really would be good to have? Um, part of that, the, having the design documents is you'll know uh, what things are planned but perhaps not implemented versus maybe there's things that the uh, your partner didn't even think about. So for example, in our game, uh, we have some sound effects but not really much music. Uh, maybe you could say, oh, have you thought about having some music in your game? That would make it a lot cooler. Um, so those things, you'll, all, you'll do all of that on Canvas uh, in terms of uh, typing out your, your comments, and then your partners will get those comments um, from you. And uh, then once you have your comments back from your partners, then uh, the, the next week basically will be to, uh, to finalize your game, fix bugs, add features, and so on. And then what you'll turn in is a finalized game design document, the link to your final project, and then at the end of it, you'll have sort of a brief reflection, which what I would like you to do is sort of address these things. So sort of looking back on the process, um, what challenges did you face and how did you overcome them? Uh, things that you might have done differently if you could have started over. And then uh, what are you really proud about about your project? So, you know, what's the, the, the sort of, if you had to put a picture on, uh, you know, if I was going to put a picture of your project on my refrigerator, uh, what would be sort of the, the thing that you're, you're most proud of? Okay, so here's the grading rubric um, of what you need to have. So keep all of this in mind of technical stuff. Um, you're going to need to have some sort of game over and win screen. Now, exactly what that's going to look like will partly depend on your game and partly depend on your sort of artistic uh, vision. Um, so, for example, let's say you were making a game that was like zombies are trying to attack the Spark Center or something. Um, the point of the game may be to uh, survive as long as possible. And so maybe there's no way to win. You can only win by losing less badly, something like that. Um, so uh, exactly what your game over and win screens, what they are, what they look like is going to vary from game to game. Uh, and so I'm going to leave you guys a little bit of flexibility there uh, in terms of, of what it is. But it should be appropriate to whatever game design you're going for. Uh, I want to see a fully functional, minimal, viable product. And then uh, functionality enhancements. And then, of course, your reflective statement. And um, if you do not turn something in... Um, on time, then um, uh, then that is bad. Uh, if you turn in step two late, then uh, I may not assign you to have peers that are going to review your project, and that's not good. You want to have people reviewing your work. Uh, that will help you get better at it. Um, okay, so uh, any questions on sort of the technical uh, requirements for this? Um, should be pretty straightforward. Um, sorry, there was one thing I wanted, one other thing I wanted to say. Um, what was it? Yeah, okay. I think that's, uh, that's pretty much it. All right, so if you have questions about that, um, you know, let me know. This is all on Canvas. And, um, uh, the, right now, the only assignment uh, that I've got listed on Canvas is to turn in the design document, and I'll add the other um, the other uh, submission things uh, here shortly, so that uh, you can get get going on those. Um, I hope that you guys will find this video game project fun. There will be moments of frustration, um, and that just sort of goes with the territory. Um, but uh, I, th I I found that that uh, guys really do enjoy. Uh, the video game uh, project and uh, really think it's a lot of fun in the end and I'm really looking forward to to seeing all 27 projects or however many there are uh, when when all is said and done uh, okay so I'll go ahead and kill the stream here and uh, if you guys have um, uh, will there be available screen sharing this time also um,
what do you mean screen sharing? Well, I'll let you um, ask me that on, on Discord. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream and then get this uh, uploaded to YouTube. Uh, so, um, yeah, I will talk to you guys whenever. Thanks for coming.